Hi, and welcome back to my shop. Well, I've had a number of things come up and I just haven't had the time to spend in my shop that I usually do. Now I have an upcoming project that's a commission that's uh, intended to be a genuine mahogany sideboard. And it's going to incorporate drawers with dovetails, it's going to have cabinets with doors, and it's also going to have a lot of curves. And I felt a little intimidated just diving right back into the shop and taking on such a complex project, especially using fairly expensive materials. So I thought it might make sense for me to work on a project before that that'll really help me get my groove back. And that way I'll be a lot more confident when I'm going into that sideboard uh, piece. So what I've done is gone out and sourced some genuine pattern mahogany, which is the same material I'm gonna be using on the sideboard. And I've gone ahead and milled it up already. And this is gonna be a much smaller, sort of easily accessible project, but it's gonna incorporate a lot of those same elements, dovetails, drawers, cabinets, doors, as well as some curves. So with that, let's head over to the computer and I'll show you what I came up with for my groove project. Here you can see the design that I came up with. It's essentially a basic wall hanging cabinet it incorporates three drawers in the base, and you'll notice that there's a curved profile of the drawer cabinet here. So each of these drawers is gonna have a slight curve to it. If I orbit a little bit, you can get a better idea for the, the shape of that curve, both on the drawers as well as the top of the case here. Now to keep things a little bit simpler and make the project go faster, it also incorporates a cabinet with three shelves and the cabinet doors are actually completely flat. They don't continue to follow that same curve. So they'll be a little bit recessed. But the base, the top of the drawer cabinet, and the top of the overall cabinet will all incorporate that exact same curve. And then you can also see that the case itself is going to be dovetailed together. So this is incorporating the dovetails, the case construction, the cabinet, the drawers, as well as the curvature that are really gonna help me fine tune those skills before I move on to the more complex sideboard project. Here you can see all of my components laid out. I have my rails and styles here. This is all half inch stock. I've got my shelves here. This is actually 5 16th stock. And then I've got my drawer fronts. So all three drawer fronts are gonna come from this single piece so that I can keep the grain continuous across. Here are the two pieces that I'm gonna to use to actually create the entire case. So I'm gonna show you how I do that so I keep the grain continuous throughout the case. This is also half inch stock. And then I even have my divider stock created. And this is actually 3 16 so that starts to get really, really narrow, really thin. And then I've got my secondary materials over here. The panels for the two front doors are actually gonna be these two pieces of book matched cherry, which I think will complement the mahogany nicely. And then I just milled up some pine for the drawer sides. And I even have some walnut, believe it or not, for the drawer bottoms. It just happens that this has a ton of sapwood in it and it's not something that I was gonna use for any project. So that's what I'm gonna use for my drawer bottoms. They'll be nice and strong. So now that I've got all of the pieces laid out and identified, I'm gonna start by working on the case. Here I have the two pieces that are gonna make up the case, both the top, bottom, and sides. So this is a single piece of mahogany that I resawed down the middle. And what I'm gonna do is cut the first piece along here, and that's gonna give me the top and one side. And then I'll cut the second piece along this side, and that'll create the bottom and the other side. And what that does is it allows me to use a single piece, sort of open it up into three dimensions, and then I'll have continuous grain that goes all the way around the case. It's a technique I tend to incorporate into my pieces, and I think it, it just gives an added little touch that uh, uh, shows an attention to detail. Now, the dimensions of this overall piece are roughly 15 by 24. It's not exact, but uh, close enough. And in order to make sure that I keep the orientation correct, I'm just gonna put a single chalk line on one side and a double chalk line on the other side. It'll let me just match these up if I get them mixed up. And then I'm just going to mark, I need again, 15 inches out of this one side. I'm gonna add a little bit extra, make sure that I can still get the 24 easily out of this other piece. And so that right there 
is where I'm going to make my cut on the one piece. And then I'm just going to flip that over to mark where I'm going to make my cut on the second piece. So I'll just take that over to the sliding compound miter saw and make those cuts. I've gone ahead now and dimensioned the sides of the case to final width, which is five inches. But as you'll recall, the top, the bottom, and the first shelf all have that bow shape to the front profile. So I've left the top and the bottom piece wide, and I've also cut the bottom shelf the same width. It's uh, just under six inches, which is gonna give me enough room to cut that bow shape on the front. So what I did, as I had the table saw set up, I also created a template out of MDF. So this is the exact same size as the top and the bottom of the case. And so I'm gonna shape my curve into this template and then use that to transfer that same curve to the top, the bottom, and the shelf. Now to actually scribe my, my arc or my bow, I'm just going to use a thin, flexible strip of mahogany. This is actually just a cutoff from when I was cutting my uh, top and bottom to width. Um, I just put these two clamps on the end so that they line up with where the intersection of those two lines happens. And then I also have my center mark here. So I'm just going to take this strip, put it down, and then pull it and ensure that the furthest point of that arc hits my center point. And then I'm just double checking here to make sure that my cross hashes meet up. And then I can just score my line from there. Here you can see the final shape of the line. I have a straight air area on both ends and then the arc comes up and nicely meets the edge here right at the center. So my next step is then to take this over to the bandsaw and waste out the excess. Now that I have my template completed and I have my top, bottom, and shelf cut to size, the next thing I'm going to do is combine the top, the shelf, and the bottom into a single packet. And I'm going to shape all three of these throughout the process all at the same time. That way I can ensure that they're all um, identical and they all have the exact same curve on the front. So I've made sure to align them properly, so I'm cutting the curve on the right side. And I'm just going to use a little bit of blue tape to bundle up my packet. I'm essentially going to follow the exact same process on the bandsaw that I followed with the template, this time just with the gang of components all blocked together. Now that I have the rough profile cut off the bandsaw, instead of using the oscillating spindle sander again, I'm going to use the router table and template route this. So instead of taping this on, I'm actually going to use a little double stick tape, which I find works really, really effectively for template routing. Just to line up my template so it's flush all the way around. And I can just ensure here that I am proud all the way around, meaning that I'm not going to have any voids or gaps that I've missed after template routing this. And I'm just going to quickly clamp it into my vise, and that'll help set the pressure sensitivity of the adhesive. Now that I have my template attached and all of my components 
ganged together, I'm over at the router table and I'm going to start with a flush trim bit that's got the bushing mounted on the bottom. And essentially I'm going to use this bit to trim the right hand side of the piece because that's where I'm going to be cutting downhill against the grain or with the grain I should say. And then if I were to try to do the same thing for the left side, that bit would be spinning right into this downhill grain and they'd have a big opportunity for some tear out or for the piece to get caught in there. And that's, that could get messy. So I'm just going to do the right hand side this way. Then I'm going to flip the entire packet over and then put a bit in that's got the bushing mounted on the top. And then I'll do the other side so that I'm going with the grain when I'm cutting both directions. <laughs> Now that I have um, all of my curves cut and I have all of my case sides and tops completely milled to size, it's time for me to start thinking about the layout for the dovetails. Now with a standard piece of case work, what you do is you have the, the tails on the top of the case and you have the pins on the side of the case. The rationale being there's never really any force that's either pushing the top or the bottom away from the case. But because this is a wall hanging cabinet, I've got my MDF representation of the top here. All of the weight of the cabinet is gonna be suspended from the top. So for that reason, when you have a wall hanging case, you want the dovetails to be on the side so that there's mechanical force preventing the sides from dropping from the top. What I did is experiment with a couple of different designs. Now, because you're gonna have the tails on the side of the case, it's those pins and the end grain of the pins that are actually going to stand out the most when this is actually assembled. So I tried a couple of different options and ended up choosing this one and I've darkened it in with Sharpie so that it's a little more um, prominent on the camera. What I decided to go with is three kind of narrow pins in the middle and then slightly wider pins on the end. The reason the end pins have to be a little bit wider is that there's gonna be a quarter inch rabbit cut into the back of the case that will receive the actual case back. And I didn't want these pins to be so narrow that when I cut that quarter inch rabbit that they were super fragile. And then I of course wanted to just make that symmetrical with the pin on the front side. So I'm pretty happy with this layout and it's gonna be you know, good from a design standpoint as well as the integrity of the casework for a hanging cabinet. Now that I have my dovetails laid out on my template, I've got my left side of the case here. And all I need to do is then transfer these dovetails over to the actual piece. I have a convention where I just use a piece of blue tape folded over one side where I've labeled L for left. I know that the blue tape folds over onto the front of the case and that the other side where the tape folds over is the outside. Um, I have my template here. I put an F at the top so I know that this is the front. I'm always going to line that up with the front. And all I have to do is then just align these two so that I've got front to the front. And then all I need to do is transfer each of these lines onto my actual case piece. Now that I've got these nice and lined up, all I need to do is take my dovetail marker. This is the uh, Veritas dovetail marker. It's a one to eight ratio, which is what I typically use for any kind of hardwood. Just line up, make sure my pencil mark is right. Mark it across the top and then give myself a good dark line and then just continue down the line. Now I can pop this out of my vise and I just need to repeat the process on the other side of my board. So I'm just gonna flip it over, make sure that I'm still lined up so that I have the front, my blue tape, and the front with my marker. Line those up, pop it back in my vise and repeat the process. Now one of the best arguments I know of for cutting your tails first is that you only have to mark out your tails on one board and then you can gang the two together and you make sure that you have exactly identical 
sets of dovetails on both sides. So I am just going to take my left and right piece, put them together, and then I'll cut both sets of tails at the same time. Now to make sure that I stay aligned, I'm just gonna use a little bit of blue tape to stick these together and then chuck it in my vise and I can start cutting my tails. Then all I need to do is extend my top line all the way across so I make sure I'm getting a nice square cut at the top of the board. And I can extend the tail all the way down if I want to in order to check my work. Now I can just start cutting away. Then I can come down to the other end of my bench and waste out the excess material. I now have my sides complete, so my tail boards are all wasted out. So I'm just gonna make sure I have everything aligned right. I've got left and right for my orientation, and then this is the bottom piece, which is gonna go like this. So I'm gonna transfer the tail board onto the pin board. So I'm just gonna flip this over like so, and then that's gonna be my alignment. Next, I can mark my pin board. And now, the moment of truth is this is where there's a, pretty much the point of no return. I've got all of my pins cut and I just need to go over and get my chisels out and waste out the excess and we'll see how everything fits together. Now that I've got all of my dovetails cut and fitted, doing a dry assembly, some of these corners end up fitting better than others, but I do have them all at least to the point where there is a slip fit of some kind. And this will give me kind of my first look at the overall like really size and dimensions of the piece. There we have it. So now that the case construction is essentially complete, um, next I can move on to starting to add the divider for the drawers at the bottom as well as the shelves that will go in the top of the case.